Hello and welcome to another episode of From the Beginning here on Heavenward Thinking. Today we're continuing on in the story of Jacob and his relationship with Laban and we're going to see how that goes in Genesis chapter 31. So I'm going to read it and get right into today's topic. Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken everything from our father, or that our father owned and has gained all this wealth from what belongs to our father. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude toward him was not what it had been. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent word to Rachel and Leah to come out to the fields where his flocks were. He said to them, I see that your father's attitude toward me is not what it was before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I've worked for your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me by changing my wages ten times. However, God has not allowed him to harm me. If he said, the speckled ones will be your wages, then all the flocks gave birth to speckled young. And if he said, the streaked ones will be your wages, then all the flocks bore streaked young. So God has taken away your father's livestock and has given them to me. In breeding season, I once had a dream in which I looked up and saw that the male goats mating with a flock were streaked, speckled, or spotted. The angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, I answered, here I am. And he said, look up and see that all the male goats mating with a flock are streaked, speckled, or spotted. For I have seen all that Laban has been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. Then Rachel and Leah replied, do we still have any share in the inheritance of our father's estate? Does he not regard us as foreigners? Not only has he sold us, but he has used up what was paid for us. Surely all the wealth that God took away from our father belongs to us and our children. So do whatever God has told you. Then Jacob put his children and his wives on camels, and he drove all his livestock ahead of him, along with all the goods he had accumulated in Paddan Aram, to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. When Laban had gone to shear his sheep, Rachel stole her father's household gods. Moreover, Jacob deceived Laban, the Aramean, by not telling him he was running away. So he fled with all he had, crossed the Euphrates River, and headed for the hill country of Gilead. So there's a lot going on in this story, and it's important that we look at the different portions of it one at a time so that we can see what God is doing in the life of Jacob, what Jacob's learned, what he hasn't learned, and what what interactions are going on in this story. So early in it, we see that something is going wrong. We already know that there's going to be a problem. There's going to be some kind of conflict coming to a head here. We already know that there's been deception in the family. Jacob has done a ton of that himself. We've already looked at that. Then we started to see how Laban has deceived Jacob multiple times, and we really get more of that in this chapter. But right off the bat, in verse 1, we see that Laban's sons are, are complaining against what Jacob has doing, against the fact that God has blessed Jacob by taking away what was Laban's and giving it to Jacob slowly over time. Even though Laban tried to take advantage of Jacob, God flipped it on its head and was able to use what Laban had and give it to Jacob, whom he had a a big plan for, as we see, that God was going to call him back to his home country, back to where he belonged after he had learned the lessons he needed to learn. So we already see that there's going to be a problem. There's going to be some conflict. Then we see in verse 3, the Lord says to Jacob, Go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. So we see that God is calling him back to his homeland. He's calling him to face his fears, probably, to face what he left behind, to face all the problems that he had created, and he is going to face them differently than when he left them. He is a different man now. He's not perfect, but he's starting to trust more in God. He's starting to be more obedient to the Lord. He's starting to have a changed personality, and he's growing to maturity. He's also older in this passage. He's, he's growing. He's, he's learned some things through all the struggles he's gone through with Laban and, and his whole situation with his wives and all the conflict there. He's learned some things. Uh, just as we in life learn things, God often has to take us out or push us out of where we are comfortable because we are blinded by what we want, like Jacob was, where he just wanted the blessing and all these things, and he tried to take them for himself, and and he made some crazy mistakes and some crazy problems, just like we do when we just want something. And so God sometimes has to remove us from those situations for a while to teach us things, to let things happen to us, and so that we will grow into the person he wants us to be. And that seems to be the case for Jacob, but it's the case for you and I on a daily basis. God wants to teach us something if we will just listen. So sometimes he has to remove us from a situation so that we'll listen and give God that attention, or so that God will just be able to work on us in a different way, in a different setting. 
But now he is going to send him back to his homeland. He has to face all the things he left behind. A lot of times we, as Christians, we flee from something and we don't like having to deal with the problems, whether it be our, the consequences of our sin, whether it be because we have mistreated people or done things like Jacob had done where he had left some people, maybe not in the greatest way, and he had definitely wronged his brother Esau, and he had, he had definitely wronged even his parents, at least his father Isaac, and he, he had been very deceptive. And so he's going to have to face those things, just as we have to often face the things that we fear or face the things that we've done in the past. We have to come to a head with them and, and face them with the Lord's help. And God explains that in that verse. He is going to be with Jacob. He's not just sending him back so that he can go be killed by his brother if he's still angry, or that he can be overcome by his fears or any of the other things that we might be afraid of when we're, when we're facing a difficult situation. God says, I will be with you. I will help you. I will work in you. And that's what he's telling Jacob in this section. Then we see that Jacob, he listens to God. He, he's learning to be obedient, as we mentioned earlier. So he listens and he, he tells his wives uh, what the Lord's telling him to do. He explains how Laban has changed his wages 10 times, how he's kept trying to sneak around his agreements with Jacob and take advantage of his work and take advantage of his integrity and his honesty and his hard work, work ethic that we talked about last week. And yet God continued to bless him. And Jacob explains that himself. It says, however, God has not allowed him to harm me. And says, God has taken away your father's livestock and has given them to me. So he sees the hand of God. He already understands God's blessing. He knows he, that God has already promised to bless him. And he's really starting to see that. And he's, he's starting to recognize that. Just like you and I are called to do on a daily basis. To recognize the blessing of God. To recognize the things that God is doing in our life. And then to give him the credit for that. To not give the credit to ourselves. Jacob in this section, he's giving God the credit. He's giving credit to whom credit is due. He's honoring the Lord and praising him. That, that's what we have to do. We gotta give credit to God when he does things in our lives, not take the glory for ourselves. So he's doing that here and he's making sure that he credits God for that. And he explains the dream he had and that God's telling him he needs to go back and, and to leave at once. And so Rachel and Leah replied, do whatever God has told you. Do whatever God has told you. And that is the kind of advice we need to seek as Christians. People, we need to surround ourselves with people who will give us this advice. Do whatever God tells you. So many times we try to seek advice from different people and they often give us what they think we should do or what they think we want to hear. Instead, we should seek out godly, wise advice from people who will tell us, do what God is telling you, not what I'm telling you, not what you want to do yourself. Do what God is telling you. And that's where we need to be as Christians. Focus on what God is telling us to do, not what other people are telling us to do. So it's important that we see that. And that's striking when we see that in this passage, especially when we see that these women may not have been perfectly understanding things themselves. They immediately go and do something that wasn't so smart. Because while Jacob is getting ready to go, and he's getting ready to return, there, there are a couple other problems here at the very end of this section. Two problems. One is Rachel stole her father's household gods. That doesn't make much sense when we just saw that she was telling Jacob, great advice, do whatever God has told you. Now a couple of verses later, she's stealing Laban's household gods. How she got there in those couple verses, how she went from a high point to a low point, we don't know. Uh, but we do the same thing on a daily basis, don't we? We will go from saying that God is great, God is our Lord, and we're going to serve him, and then, and then immediately we turn to the things of this world for satisfaction or for guidance or for help. We, we immediately put an idol up above God, or we want to put an idol with God, you know, get, put God and then the things I have, God and the money I have in my bank account. We do, we do this all the time. And we need to be careful of this and see the danger of this because this creates a problem for the family and it's going to create a, a significant problem. So we need to be careful as Christians that we don't go from this great high point of, yep, do what God tells you and we're going to do it too. And then immediately go after idols. That, that's something we need to be careful of because it is very easy. We can easily cast blame or, or make fun of what Rachel was doing, but, but we do it ourselves on a daily basis, so we have to be very careful. And then the second point here that, that was another problem is what Jacob did. We see here in 
verse 23. Moreover, Jacob deceived Laban the Aramean by not telling him he was running away. So even though Jacob has grown and we've seen some significant growth, spiritual maturity, and all kinds of other great qualities and characteristics of Jacob in this chapter and the previous chapter, we've seen how God has worked in him And we don't want to take away from that. At the same time, we have to realize that he is still not a perfect man, just like you and I aren't. Even though God does amazing things in our lives and he teaches us daily and he grows our faith and he matures us spiritually each day as we seek him diligently, even though all of that is going on in our lives, we still fall into temptation. We still have a weakness that that God continues to try to work on, that we have to understand that we need to take care of. And Jacob had that same problem. Even though God had changed a lot of things in his life and he had learned lots of lessons, he still struggled with that habit he had always had, that deception. Rather than face the fear, knowing God was with him and God was calling him to do something, he went, well, I'm going to do what God's calling me to do, but I'm going to kind of hide what I'm doing. And that's another warning for each of us. Often God will call us to do something, whether it be to take a job, start a relationship, minister to somebody, witness to a person, whatever it is God is calling us to do, move somewhere. It may be crazy to us. We need to realize that we need to step out in confidence. When we know God is calling us to something, not someone else, not ourselves. when God is calling us to something, we need to step out in faith, in boldness. When he says, leave at once, we need to leave at once. Jacob got that down, but he didn't get the last part. He didn't step out in boldness. He was still afraid of human beings. And I think a lot of us struggle with that. A lot of us struggle with the fear of what are other people going to think? What are other people going to say? And maybe most importantly, what are other people going to do to us if we try to do something for God? And so Jacob has that problem, and it's going to create even more problems, just like Rachel stealing the household gods is going to create a problem with Laban. So is Jacob's deception. So we have to be very careful because as we've seen in this story, as we've seen throughout the whole book of Genesis, our actions have consequences and, and great significant consequences. And so we need to make sure that we are focused on what God's calling us to do, that we step out with the boldness God's called us to step out in and really have faith in God and not worry about what other human beings are going to do to us if we're following after Jesus. Well, I want to encourage you with that this week and then join us next time as we continue the second half of Genesis chapter 31 and we see what happens with Laban and Jacob when they have to have a final confrontation here. So join us next time for another episode of From the Beginning here on Heavenward Thinking.